Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Marcela Ruizcai, and uh, together with uh, Gustavo Mercado, we are the chairs of the Internet of Things Working Group. And for this presentation, we'll divide it. First, we will talk a bit about the working group, and then we are going to say why the network operators should consider the uh, traffic of IoT. You know that uh, the advance of IoT at uh, a global level make it necessary for us to get together in forums and uh, to strengthen uh, the capacities of the region, both uh, in uh, the academia and uh, in uh, development and innovation and also in industry. For us, for the, the Internet uh, of Things Working Group contributing to this, uh, the decision of the policies and strategies, plans and actions related with the creation and uh, the use uh, of uh, the technologies of R&D is uh, essential and we are working in a strategy for that. As to the objectives that we have as a working group, it's to promote the discussion of the community on topics related with IoT, to disseminate the work that is uh, being conducted on standardization and interoperability, and to collaborate with the different organizations and groups that work on IoT in the region, and to promote the, the talks and conferences and lectures uh, related with IoT in the agenda of the LACNOC events. When we finish this presentation, we are going to leave the way you can connect uh, us uh, and the way you can get involved through the discussion lists of LACNOG. You can do that through the LACNOG website or LACNIC. With any of the two, you'll be able to subscribe. And of course, we invite you all to collaborate and to enrich the work that we've been performing. So now I give the floor to Gustavo, who will tell you about why is it that network operators should consider the IoT traffic. Thank you, Marcela. Well, as Marcela said, I'm part of uh, the working group of LACNOG, and we joined LACNOG several years ago, and uh, ever since we have, and so we, our idea is to give information about IoT in relation with the network operators. That is uh, our leitmotif. Um, the NOG um, uh, groups uh, in uh, LACNOG and in other countries. The next slide, please. One of the things we, that we always think uh, at uh, the IoT working groups, uh, that this is what we've seen is uh, to answer why is it that network operators should take uh, the IoT traffic into account. So that would be the main role of uh, this uh, working group. First of all, you have a graph there that says that by 2030, there will be 25 billion devices of IoT connected. These IoT uh, devices will be, of course, located across the world, not necessarily in places where there are servers with information, but literally in the most remote sites in the world. And from those places, we are going to have IoT um, uh, traffic over the internet. For instance, by 2030, I calculated that an IoT device is sending uh, 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 20 byte uh, packet, uh, for instance, a sensor uh, sending uh, measures uh, uh, together with the overhead, uh, the size of the packets, in, uh, especially IPv6, because IoT was designed to work with uh, IPv6. 
it would have a traffic of 1.10 exabytes per year, although, well, um, 1.1 is not so significant because usually there's 70 exabytes per year. It is important because the traffic of IoT is completely different from the normal traffic in the internet. That is why the network operators should take that into account. If we say that the internet traffic, most traffics, for instance, well, the streaming uh, traffic, for instance, that mostly is in the internet, has a certain source and a certain destination. And it's always from uh, the origin to the destination in a predictable flow at uh, the internet, in internet traffic, uh, in the IoT traffic, it's completely different. So the, uh, the packets of the internet are small, are very small. For instance, one byte for an IPv6 packet, more than 2,000%. So the packets are quite, uh, you don't, we don't make the most of them. Sometimes they are, um, um, they're not well formed and they have a high overhead of the protocol. Now, the IoT traffic is not just inbound to the operators and the networks that usually do internet uh, operations, but it also goes outbound. Um, mm, th that is, that the traffic is going to be very uh, heavy and very diverging. There is also a whole range of protocols. Usually, we are used to one or two protocols in the traffic of the internet. In IoT, there are many protocols, and many of them are not standard. They are silos or pro proprietary um, uh, protocols where the um, manufacturers of the devices um, uh, design their own uh, protocols to compete in the market. It's similar to what happened in 1980s. And security will be scarce or no, because of the difficulty of uh, encrypting. Because of the, sm the small size of the IoT devices, they cannot encrypt, for instance. Um, uh, and also, interoperability is very scarce or non existent. That is, the content of the packets cannot be told apart because of their contents, because of the characteristic of the, its coding, because there are different inter semantic interoperability, so the packets cannot be defined. Due to all these factors, the IoT traffic has many peculiarities that the network operators should consider. So all these characteristics, all these situations of packets that will reach your networks or leave from your networks is well, you have to improve and consider and to be careful with all this traffic and uh, because it will be very intense and you, the operators will have to take that into account. That is why the working group at LACNOG, that is why we are in, uh, urge the network operators to start learning about IoT. Thank you. Well, thank you. Are there any questions? Good afternoon. Gustavo Marce uh, Marcel Giudice. Hello, Oscar. Oscar Giudice. I was listening and I was thinking, what would happen if we take more intelligence to the gateway that transforms or 
links one network uh, to the internet. That is part of the processing is done in the gateway instead uh, of doing it in servers. That is, that would be the question. Would it be feasible? How do you see it? Well, yes, there is a trend in recent, uh, lately, of edge computing or for computing in the border. But that is simply the current trend. It's not a reality yet. The gateways don't have the full capabilities or the power today to do processing or to adapt the traffic enough, uh, com complete, so that the final packets of IOP should not uh, have inconvenience when recognizing them, especially in security. Thank you, Gustavo and Marcela. We now have another question in the room. Hello, Marcela. Hello, Gustavo. Ariel Wecher. I have a question that is rather philosophical, something that I was thinking with all this because I was frightened with the names that you gave. As an operator, this is something that today we consider marginal. But with the trends that you are showing, we need to pay attention. So my question is, many protocols and many technologies started being very user-friendly and based on trust with no encryption and with no uh, notion of security since minute zero. You said that uh, this, this is because uh, y this uh, consumes resource and energy, but shouldn't, but isn't it very complex putting so many devices that uh, talk something so open and that is exposed to many security risks? Well, Marcelo, Marcelo, do I answer? Yes. Well, actually, it's like the uh, with the Internet of Things, I think that we are as if it were in the 80s, as if we were in the first uh, Internet. The Internet was, they started creating it then. At the time, there was no security because very pe few people used it and everybody trusted each other. So I think that that is the stage that IoT is at. Of course, we have learned security of the internet for 30 years, so it's not that we don't know anything of security. As a matter of fact, at this FTL meeting, there were two lectures only for IoT security. But the trend, of course, is uh, uh, to follow in that line. But remember that most IoT devices come from different, uh, from small manufacturers, and they want to put uh, their products in the markets uh, as quick as possible and to win the market. And very, and most of the, usually the, the security is not their concern. So one of our tasks as a task force or working group and of all the network operators should be to promote the use of security in IoT. It's very important because if not, we're going to run into serious problems. Thank you. I don't see any more questions. No questions in the Q&A, no questions uh, in the room. So thank you, Marcela, Gustavo, a round of applause. All right, so now let me introduce Juliana Guerra, who will talk uh, about the IATF Working Group. Juliana, 